How can nothing make sense? How could there be nothing? What was before the Big Bang? Some people say that asking what was there before the Big Bang is akin to asking what is north of the North Pole. There simply isn't and wasn't anything. But how could that be? It's hard to wrap my mind around it. It's just as hard to wrap my mind around the fact that everything we see around us, including the things that are too far away to see, was once contained in an impossibly tiny point, surrounded by nothingness. Or at least this impossibly small oasis provided the seed for everything we see today. We know that the Big Bang eventually produced the essential light elements that are so abundant in the universe. We know it was so hot that atoms could not even form until the temperature cooled. We know that the light elements grouped together after the fundamental forces in physics split into four distinct categories, and that if enough hydrogen atoms pull on each other, stars will form. Inside of stars, the temperature and pressure are so great that the atomic nuclei of hydrogen atoms can fuse, a process known as fusion, something that could solve many problems on Earth if we can recreate and harness its amazing power. Fusion is responsible for all the heavy elements we see in everyday life, as well as those we rarely see. Unstable stars eventually hurl heavy elements into space, where they condense into gas clouds and ultimately planets, which then give rise to something as inexplicably intricate as life. All of this was possible from nothing. Nothing. How can that be? How can we have something from nothing? It's a question asked by anybody who takes the time to think about our origins. Can we ever answer these questions? Well, you have to keep watching. The notion of the Big Bang goes back nearly 100 years when the first evidence for the expanding universe appeared. If the universe is expanding and cooling today, that implies a past that was smaller, denser, and hotter. In our imaginations, we can extrapolate back to arbitrarily small sizes, high densities, and hot temperatures, all the way to a singularity where all of the universe's matter and energy are condensed in a single point. For many decades, these two notions of the Big Bang, of the hot, dense state that describes the early universe and the initial singularity, were inseparable. But beginning in the 1970s, scientists started identifying some puzzles surrounding the Big Bang, noting several properties of the universe that weren't explainable within the context of these two notions simultaneously. When cosmic inflation was first put forth and developed in the early 1980s, it separated the two definitions of the Big Bang, proposing that the early hot, dense state never achieved these singular conditions, but rather that a new inflationary state preceded it. There really was a universe before the hot Big Bang, and some very strong evidence from the 21st century truly proves that it's so. Although we're certain that we can describe the very early universe as being hot, dense, rapidly expanding, and full of matter and radiation, i.e. by the hot Big Bang, the question of whether that was truly the beginning of the universe or not is one that can be answered with evidence. The differences between a universe that began with a hot Big Bang and a universe that had an inflationary phase that precedes and sets up the hot Big Bang are subtle but tremendously important. After all, if we want to know what the very beginning of the universe was, we need to look for evidence from the universe itself. The details we see in the cosmic web were actually determined much earlier. In the early universe, the seeds of the large-scale structure were imprinted. These seeds, which originated when neutral atoms first formed, have been evolving over hundreds of millions and even billions of years. Today, stars, galaxies, galaxy clusters, and large-scale filamentary structures can all be traced back to these density imperfections. These seeds are still present throughout the universe, lingering as temperature imperfections in the cosmic microwave background, which is the residual glow from the Big Bang. As measured by the WMAP satellite in the 2000s and its successor, the Planck satellite, in the 2010s, these temperature fluctuations are observed to appear on all scales, and they correspond to density fluctuations in the early universe. 
The link is because of gravitation and the fact that within general relativity, the presence and concentration of matter and energy determines the curvature of space. Light has to travel from the region of space where it originates to the observer's eyes. And that means the overdense regions, with more matter and energy than average, will appear colder than average, as the light must climb out of a larger gravitational potential well. The underdense regions, with less matter and energy than average, will appear hotter than average, as the light has a shallower than average gravitational potential well to climb out of, and the average density regions will appear as an average temperature, the mean temperature of the cosmic microwave background. But where did these imperfections come from initially? These temperature imperfections that we observe in the Big Bang's leftover glow come to us from an epoch that's already 380,000 years after the start of the hot Big Bang, meaning they've already experienced 380,000 years of cosmic evolution. The story is quite different depending on which explanation you turn toward. According to the singular Big Bang explanation, the universe was simply born with an original set of imperfections, and these imperfections grew and evolved according to the rules of gravitational collapse, particle interactions, and radiation interacting with matter, including the differences between normal and dark matter. According to the inflationary origin theory, the hot Big Bang occurs after a cosmic inflation period. In this theory, imperfections in the cosmic structure are caused by quantum fluctuations. These fluctuations arise due to the energy-time uncertainty relation in quantum physics during the inflationary period when the universe is rapidly expanding. Initially occurring on small scales, these quantum fluctuations are stretched to larger scales by inflation. Over time, newer fluctuations are added creating a mix of fluctuations across all distance scales. These two pictures are conceptually different, but the reason they're interesting to astrophysicists is that each picture leads to potentially observable differences in the types of signatures we observe. In the singular Big Bang picture, the types of fluctuations that we'd expect to see would be limited by the speed of light, the distance that a signal, gravitational or otherwise, would have been allowed to propagate if it were moving at the speed of light through the expanding universe that began with a singular event known as the Big Bang. But in a universe that underwent a period of inflation prior to the start of the hot Big Bang, we'd expect there to be density fluctuations on all scales, including on scales larger than the speed of light could have allowed a signal to travel since the start of the hot Big Bang. Because inflation essentially doubles the size of the universe in all three dimensions, with each tiny fraction of a second that passes, fluctuations that occurred a few hundred fractions of a second ago are already stretched to a scale larger than the presently observable universe. Although later fluctuations superimpose themselves atop the older, earlier, larger scale fluctuations, inflation allows us to start the universe off with ultra large scale fluctuations that shouldn't exist in the universe if it began with a big bang singularity without inflation. In other words, the big test that one can perform is to examine the universe in all its gory details and look for either the presence or absence of this key feature, what cosmologists call superhorizon fluctuations. At any moment in the universe's history, there's a limit to how far a signal that's been traveling at the speed of light since the start of the hot Big Bang could travel. And that scale sets what's known as the cosmic horizon. Scales that are smaller than the horizon, known as subhorizon scales, can be influenced by physics that's occurred since the start of the hot Big Bang. Scales that are equal to the horizon, known as horizon scales, are the upper limit to what could have been influenced by physical signals since the start of the hot Big Bang. And scales that are greater than the horizon, known as super horizon scales, are beyond the limit of what could have been caused by physical signals generated at or since the start of the hot Big Bang. In other words, if we can search the universe for signals that appear on superhorizon scales, that's a great way to discriminate between a non-inflationary universe that began with a singular hot Big Bang, which shouldn't have them at all, and an inflationary universe that possessed an inflationary period prior to the start of the hot Big Bang, which should possess these superhorizon fluctuations. Unfortunately, simply looking at a map of temperature fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background 
isn't enough on its own to tell these two scenarios apart. The temperature map of the cosmic microwave background can be broken up into different components, some of which occupy large angular scales on the sky, and some of which occupy small angular scales on the sky. On scales below about one degree, we can accurately account for all of the different sources that contribute to fluctuations in temperature, arising from both the early universe, around the era of matter radiation equality, and the later universe, particularly at the epoch of reionization. But on scales greater than one degree, and especially on scales greater than 10 degrees, we can't fully account for the fluctuations we observe within the framework of a hot Big Bang alone. We need a super horizon contribution to explain what we observe. That super horizon contribution is what we expect if we want to create a universe in the hot Big Bang state with the initial fluctuations generated by inflation. For many years, the scientific community knew that these temperature fluctuations existed, but that we couldn't definitively state what their origins were. However, a new line of evidence emerged in 2002 that firmly changed things. The first high quality polarization maps of the cosmic microwave background. The photons that make up the cosmic microwave background have a specific orientation to their electric fields, indicating the orientation of the light wave. At the time the photons were emitted, they were primarily unpolarized, but due to interactions with the electrons present in the early universe, a specific polarization pattern emerged. This pattern can be directly linked to the density fluctuations from the early universe that were then stretched out due to inflation. The discovery of this particular polarization pattern provided compelling evidence for inflation. The superhorizon temperature fluctuations alone were suggestive of inflation, but their presence in the temperature and polarization patterns together was practically a smoking gun. These findings suggested that the very early universe indeed underwent a period of rapid exponential expansion, setting the stage for the Big Bang and everything that followed. The theory of the Big Bang and its precursor, cosmic inflation, continues to be a topic of intense study. We may never know for certain what came before the Big Bang, but the evidence increasingly suggests that it was not just a singular event. Instead, it appears that our universe was born out of an inflationary phase, characterized by quantum fluctuations that sowed the seeds for the cosmic structures we see today. This evidence not only deepens our understanding of the universe's origin, but also opens up new questions. What is the nature of this inflationary field? Could there be multiple universes, each with its own unique version of inflation and subsequent Big Bang? As we continue to explore these mysteries, we may come closer to understanding the very nature of existence itself.